I'm gonna give you one of the best hacks to fix your weightlifting technique, and we're gonna start right now. So when we're thinking about weightlifting, we have to look at it through the simplest terms, okay? Or the simplest goals. And in all reality, all we're trying to do is lift as much weight as possible in the snatch and in the clean and jerk. So before we provide that simple hack, I think the most important thing now that we've established we want to lift as much weight as possible is that we actually have to understand technique. So we're gonna blast through technique and what that means, how we can actually move as efficiently as possible and then we can provide that quick hack to make your technique as good as possible. The first thing that we have to think about is right off the floor, we want our knees to clear back. So if we're pulling from the floor to the knees, we want the knees to clear back and that's in the snatch and in the clean and jerk. That's gonna help us load our hamstrings. And our chest is gonna rise. Our hips might rise a little bit quicker than our chest, especially in the snatch. But then once we get to the bottom part of our knee, this is the area that we'll refer to as no man's land, from the bottom of the knee to the top of the knee, okay? So bottom of the knee to about the point where we call the reciprocation point. So as you get over the kneecap, the knees will start to track forward. That's gonna keep that bar really tight. So that's called no man's land because most lifts are lost in that position. And then as the knees come forward, that's what we call the reciprocation point. So from the reciprocation point into the hip, we wanna stay flat footed. Our chest is gonna start to rise. Our knees will come under the bar. We wanna drive through our heels so that we can stay nice and stable through a flat foot. And then as we make contact at the hips, that's when we'll start to plantar flex and extend our knees and extend our hips. So that's how we're looking to finish the actual lifts. The hips will extend Extend, the knees will extend and then the ankles will plantar flex on that finish and then that's going to get us into the catch of the snatch or the catch of the clean. So to recap as quickly as possible, when we pull off the floor we want those knees to clear back. As we work through no man's land we need to be tight through our heels and our chest will start to rise. When we get to the reciprocation point just above the knee that's when we're going to start to push our hips through while still keeping a flat foot. We get into the hips, stay flat footed as long as possible, keep that bar really tight into the catch. Now, when we're looking at technical errors, okay, when people actually miss, I actually think it's easier to look at the effect and then create the cause based off of what that outcome is. So the effect and then go backwards into the cause. And typically we will see lifters bend their arms off the floor, okay? We'll also see lifters jump forward, okay? So they might bend their arms and they bang the bar forward and then they end up jumping forward. We'll also see lifters sort of shoot their butt really, really high, throw their head back and jump backwards by a foot. This was me when I was snatching. I was the absolute best jump back snatcher. Okay, so this leads to a lot of inconsistent positions. So lifters typically will bump bars forward, they might get slammed in the bottom of a clean and then they have to triple bounce, quadruple bounce just to get out of that position. We might have lifters snatch and miss backwards because they jump back by a foot. So that leads to these inconsistent positions in the pull, but the effect is almost always a jumping back or a jumping forward. So the way that we can figure this out now is figure out this is the effect What's the cause? So we can work backwards in the actual lift and look at what are they doing off the floor? What are they doing around the knee? What are they doing at different positions? And typically what always ends up happening is going back to the foot, okay? And if we can look at what the foot is doing and what the hips are doing, the knees are basically slaves to the ankle and to the hip. So if we can think through that lens, and understand that what our feet are doing, what our hips are doing are really gonna control our knees, now we can start to understand that no man's land. And if you remember, I mentioned almost all lifts are lost through no man's land. So now this is where that quick hack is gonna come into play. Okay, so this takes us into that quick hack. And I was first exposed to this from Zygmunt Smalzer. He was a weightlifting coach for the United States. He was also a weightlifting coach for Poland. Now he's a weightlifting coach for Norway. And this was also coupled with multiple different experiences being around Norik Vardanian. Norik loved to use this type of technique variation. This is something that his dad had passed on to him. That's a really easy way to fix your technique. And this movement is known as the no feet variation. 
So what we wanna see is that if, if we're doing a snatch or if we're doing a clean, typically the easiest thing to do is that if we're jumping forward or we're jumping backwards or we're bending our arms or we're struggling to have some sense of connection, what we can do is put our feet in our catch position, okay? So if we're pulling a snatch, when we're doing this technical variation, we actually want our feet to be in the catch position of the snatch. Same thing goes for that clean. If we are pulling a clean, we want our feet to be in that catch position of the clean, which ideally should also be the exact same position of your front squat. So now what we're looking at is that our feet will pull and as we're pulling, we wanna stay flat footed as long as possible. And the point of a no feet technical variation is not that we can't plantar flex, but that we can't move our feet out. Okay, so our feet will stay in position. We can plantar flex, but then we'll go right back to dorsiflexion. And what ends up happening is because we're grounded the entire time, we have a longer phase of acceleration on the barbell. And then our feet dorsiflex quicker and we actually lead to a faster catch position. Okay, so we pull longer, we catch quicker. And then over time, as we do this, we have that better connection. We set the bar a little bit tighter right off the floor. That's gonna help us have better feeling with their better movement. So one of the best ways that you can implement these no feet variations is just look at your technique. Do you bend right off the floor? Does your butt shoot up right off the floor? Do you have bad connection around the knee? Do you tend to go on your toes really early? Do you tend to jump backwards? Do you tend to jump forward? If these are effects of your technique, okay, these are effects of what is the byproduct, then all you need to do is implement, and probably gain some strength, is implement no feet variations in different portions of your training. Okay, so you can even use no feet variations on let's say a day two or a day three. And you can do that for five or six sets of two to three reps and just do no feet snatch or no feet clean. You can even do no feet power jerks. And these movements will help you feel that better position. And then as you improve your no feet movement and your no feet technique, and you start to feel that better connection, now you can put that into complexes. You can start to do a no feet snatch followed by a snatch with feet. And you can actually start to implement the feeling that you're getting from the no feet pull into the actual lift with feet. And one of the key concepts here, and this is, should be an entire video all by itself, is that no feet snatches and no feet cleans teach you to slide your feet. We should be sliding our feet not jumping all over the place. If we learn how to slide properly, like Lu Jun, Jin Chung Kuo, all of these great lifters, now we actually learn how to apply force longer in a dynamic pull and still get to that catch as rapidly as possible. So make sure that you understand your technique. The whole point here is we're trying to lift as much weight as possible, but we have to be technically efficient if we want to lift as much weight as possible in a safe, manner. Make sure that you understand the positions in the lifts from the floor to the knee, around the knee, from the knee, from the reciprocation point into the hip, from the hip into the catch. And then you can start to look at what are the effects of your technique and then break that down and then start to implement those no feet movements. And we even use this inside of our book, Parabolic Periodization. It's a technical literacy book and course based entirely around weightlifting. And you can even go in there and understand what percentages do I need to hit in my no feet snatch or my no feet clean and jerk to optimize my competitive snatch or my competitive clean and jerk. So you can head over to garagestrength.com and you can pick up Parabolic Periodization, our book and course today. So head to the gym, use those no feet snatches, use those no feet cleans, improve your technique. Because remember, freaks, if you wanna become a champion, you've always gotta cultivate your power. Peace.